God, as we hear your words and take their meaning into our hearts, it is my prayer that the words of my mouth and the meditation of each and every person might be acceptable as an offering to you, for you are our strength and our salvation. Amen. These are the names of the members of Rupert United Methodist Church who have passed away, entered into God's kingdom in this last year. Loretta Klingenberg, Steve Antone, Joyce Virtue, Don Blaney, Wesley Stoller, Millie Fournier, Christine Kelly, and Ralph Phillips. I would share some other names with you, people whom I know you've never met, although it is a small world. Mrs. Thayer, Mrs. Royer, Mrs. Dekuliak. These were my Sunday school teachers when I was just a little one. Think now of the people of faith whom you have known, who have entered into their reward, entered into God's kingdom. If you like, you may speak their names at this time. All of these people have shaped who you are today. They gave you God's word. They shared their lives in such a way that you saw the truth of the gospel. They are the saints. Now you might be thinking, wait a minute, I knew so and so, and while they were great persons, they were hardly a saint. <laughs> well, in the history of the church, saint has come to meant something, to mean something, that it really was never intended to be. To become a saint in the traditional sense that the church developed, a person had to have lived a life that included miraculous events and excluded bad behavior. So when you died, the people of your church or of your town who knew you and who had witnessed the miracles that you performed would nominate you for the sainthood. And then a, the church would convene a committee who would consider your life from your childhood to your adulthood and they would think about the miraculous acts in God's name that you had performed and perhaps excuse or sweep under the carpet anything you ever did, especially as a child, that might have gotten you something less than saintly recognition. And then, once the committee had passed you, you would be moved on up and the Pope would consider whether your life and the testimony of the folks on the committee was sufficient that your name could be added to the role of the saints. There are thousands of saints. <laughs> I tried to get even a close count, and I'm thinking close to 8,000. Just people who have met the criteria and entered into the kingdom and been named by the church to be saints. But we sing hymns like when the saints go marching in, when the roll is called up yonder. And if I were to tell you that you too 
could be a saint. Would you agree with me? In the church, the earliest church, a saint was not necessarily someone who had miraculous events associated with their life. A saint was not necessarily someone who had a great following, who had converted millions to Christ. Instead, a saint was simply a faithful follower of Jesus Christ. Someone who used all of their gifts and graces to proclaim the gospel. And when we live as followers, as disciples of Christ, that is what we are. We are saints. There are in every generation some exceptional people in the church. There are people like the Apostle Paul who travel the world, who speak so eloquently that crowds, huge crowds, thousands upon thousands come to hear and believe in the gospel of Jesus Christ through their preaching. There are people who give their lives for the gospel, who live in poverty so that others may have some small amount of food or care, love by the hands of these saints. But in every generation, there are also millions of other people, like you and me. The gospel message today talks about the leaders in the church. But I want us to look back at Joshua first. Joshua is going to be, says God, a successor to Moses as a leader of the people. God speaks directly to him, and God tells him he is going to perform a miracle awfully like that that Moses performed. You know, Moses splits the Red Sea, Charlton Heston up there, people go through. Joshua is going to stop up the River Jordan, which is at a flood stage so that the people and the ark can go through on dry ground. Joshua is that one in a million, one in a billion pe person that God chooses in his generation. Then God says to Joshua, now you choose 12, one from each tribe, and they're going to take that first step in faith. You're going to stop the waters, well, God is, but at your at your indication, the waters will be stopped. And then these 12 people will step out into the center of the river. And then everybody else will follow in faith. Now, even if 12 of the leaders of the people are standing out there, how many people do you suppose are a little bit nervous about stepping into the dry riverbed and seeing the waters upriver being held back by God's hand. But in the end, it says all of the people, the, the entire nation crossed over. We are the nation. <laughs> you kind of want to break out in a song. We are the people. <laughs> we are the faithful people who step out for the gospel, who step out trusting God. We may not be the one who stops the river. We not, may not be the 12 who take the first steps and stand there as an example to the others as they cross over. But we cross over. We take up the gospel. We offer faithful witness. First the Thessalonians. Paul is talking to the church that he seated in Thessalonica and then had to leave. Paul was the great preacher of his generation. He went from town to town to town to country to country, spreading the word. But he couldn't stay with any of those churches. Or the people in the next town wouldn't hear the message. So Paul writes back to the church, checking on how they're doing and offering encouragement. And the encouragement he offers 
in this letter is this. We thank God that you accepted God's word when you heard it from us. You welcomed it for what it truly is, not a human message, but God's message. And then you allowed it, the message, to continue to work in you who are believers. The church is at work. The church is doing the work of the body of Christ. The church is feeding the poor. The church is comforting the widow. The church is spreading the good news to everyone by the power of the Holy Spirit. Paul is pleased that those who have come after him, hearing the word from him, are doing God's work in their place. Then we come to Matthew, Jesus talking to the disciples. Jesus says, now look at these people over here. Those are the church leaders, and you can tell that because their fancy dress, their, their stoles have long tassels, and their phylacteries are broad and prominent. These are the leaders of the church who want to be greeted in the marketplace, to have everybody look up to them and say, wow, those are the leaders of the church. But Jesus says, really, they're not. <laughs> Give them the respect they deserve, but don't do what they do. They teach the word, but they don't do the word. You are the people who are going to do the word. Jesus says, you are all equals. You are brothers in Christ with one Father in heaven. You are equals as teachers with one teacher who is Jesus Christ. You are the saints. In this generation, I make no pretensions to being Billy Graham or Mother Teresa, and I hope that none of us do. Because if we do, if we are filled with our sense of greatness, that we are equal to these people that God has called out, then we become like the church leaders Jesus is talking about. Instead of the saints, the everyday people of the church, equals in Christ, brothers and sisters, with one teacher who go about following faithfully and doing the work of the church that needs to be done. This is All Saints Sunday. And it is called All Saints Sunday because we remember those who have gone before, the saints of the church. Not because we are all saints, but as I was working on the meditation, the second meaning became more and more prominent to me. We are, in God's eyes, if we are faithful disciples, all saints. If a saint is someone who faithfully follows God and whose life glorifies God, glorified to show the true nature of God, then we are all saints. So on this day, we recognize the names of the saints who have died and entered into their reward. In this year, in years past, in generations past, in millennia past. But we also recognize that we are the saints of this day and age. We are the ones with the hands to do the work and the voices to proclaim the word. We may not go like Paul to Macedonia and convert an entire country, but if one person hears the word from us and sees the way we live our lives, not as hypocrites, but as faithful followers, then we have done the work of a saint. We are all saints. And so today, as we pray and give thanks for the saints who have come before us, 
We need also to pray for God's strength and guidance to be the saints for this generation so that the saints of generations to come will hear the word. How will they hear the word if no one teaches? We'll see what a disciple does. How will they see if no one does? We must pray for God's strength to be saints in this generation so that there will always be saints in God's church. Amen.